It has been a lifelong dream of mine to be exactly where I'm at right now. And I'm not speaking from a metaphorical standpoint, I'm speaking from a literal standpoint. Like physically, geologically where we're at right now has been a dream of mine to always come and visit. But we are smack dab in the middle of the island. We have driven eight and a half hours via car, crossed three borders into Quebec, Ontario, and then back in the United States. Sailed about 45 minutes across the river just to get to this very island, which we will be calling home over the next five days. Our hopes is to film another installment of On the Border. It's a very popular series that we try to bring to all of you at home, where we find a river, a lake, a pond, or any sort of waterway that sits on the border of either two states, or in this case, two countries. Right at this very moment, I am standing smack dab on the dividing line of Ontario, province in Canada, and upstate New York, United States. This is going to be quite the journey. The river we will be fishing was voted number one best bass fishery in the world, period, mic drop. And I've always wanted to come here and film a series. Not only come here and film a series, but just come and experience this beauty of a bass fishing heaven paradise. We are gonna get some rest though, get up bright and breezy and get this series kicked off right. You ready, Caleb? Wonder Bar. Uh, I don't know, it just looked good, I grabbed it. It's probably like some strange concoction of meat. You wanna test it out? That's all you. <laughs> all right, good night wieners, we'll catch you in the morning. Let's get the series kicked off. Good morning. This is it, day number one of On the Border, 1,000 Islands. Slow start to day number one. I'm like two hours deep. I haven't even gotten a bite yet. It's funny, I, I tend to hype things up and then generally it goes quite the opposite way, but it's alright. Got plenty of time here. There we go. Final. Finally, we got one. Ooh, that's a good fish. First ever St. Lawrence smallmouth hooked up. Took us long enough, my lord. Ooh, ooh, little butterball. Little butterball. Come here, pal. Come here, pal. It's a good little fish. It's two pounder, something like that. Wow. Ooh, come here. Come here. Oh, nice. Well, it took us long enough, but we finally got one. Look at this fish. This is unlike any other smallmouth I've ever caught. So short and stocky. There's something about the genetics in this system that are proven to be very exceptional. This fish is probably more tall than it is long. First St. Lawrence smallmouth. Probably about a two pounder, but you could tell this guy's a future seven for sure. Look at that dude. He's just like, you could throw a spiral with this guy. He's all gut and girth. Nice. These fish look so much different than the ones we were just catching a couple days ago. We're doing a bit of musky fishing on uh, St. John's up in Maine and New Brunswick, and we're catching quite a few of these guys as a bycatch, and this guy looks unlike any fish we encountered. Hey, put it there, wieners. Let's freaking go. Gotta be honest with you, man. St. John's is a lot more fun than this. Oh, there goes my worm right in front of his face. I wonder what he'll do. Hmm, that's weird. The grass carved in on my lure. <laughs> Some giants on this point. Can I get him to fire off? Dude, I don't get this place. 
I already just don't understand it. There are some small acts so whack this time of year. That's a giant fish. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. That's a good one. Got him. There we go, baby. On the jerk bait. Decent fish. <sighs> Finally. Found these fish on the point. I was like, what the hell are they going to eat? Nice. Right, it's a little guy, but we'll take him. Man, just because this place is notorious for producing giant fish and also numbers doesn't mean it's going to be easy for us to figure it out. I've never fished even remotely close to where we're at right now, but it's going to be fun trying to piece together this pattern. Fish number two today. Look how much different this one looks. It's got more color on him. Seeing as we're in the Great Lakes, decided to throw a little perch color. Just a little two pounder. Feels good though. I was on this point through a drop shot at them. They didn't want it originally. So I came in with the, uh, the old rip bait, that dropping temps up north. So a little suspended jerk bait is something that you should always, always have tied on. 1,000 islands and two smallmouth bass. We're working our way up in the world. Decent little fish though. That was fun. Always good to get them on a little reaction bite. I don't mind throwing drop shots and neds, but if I can get them on a moving bait, that's the way I'd rather catch them. Such a different looking smallmouth. I've never caught smallmouth that look like this. They're almost blue, like a bluish green color. If you fish here a lot and you've caught many of these fish, you probably know what I'm talking about, but they got a different look to them. I mean, we were just fishing for the same species a couple days ago in a river system, a dirty water river system. They look completely different. Much longer fish over there, not as tall, more brown, and almost had like red to them too. But that's two fish now. Let's keep cranking. The day is just beginning. <laughs> oh, new species. <laughs> That's cool. I was like, that's a very light smallmouth bite. Not a smallmouth, but a northern pike. Yup, 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 yup. And instantly puts me into my other rod. Okay. Hang, hang on, buddy. Pike always love to do this kind of <laughs> Like I said, we're gonna encounter much more. Like I mentioned prior, we're gonna encounter much, much more other than the famous smallmouth. That's right, here's a pretty example. This little northern pike. Equally as beautiful as a smallmouth. Different colors, totally different attitude in these fish. And uh, they have teeth, armed with teeth. Let me crush the bladed jig. <laughs> Just a light little bite. I'm surprised he ate it so softly. These guys are notorious for being aggressive eaters. See you later, dude. I'll clean that water is man. Holy. All right, well, the, the fish on this point have kind of slowed down. I mean, there you have it. Pike ate it before the small did. So we're gonna hop to another spot. I think the whole mantra I wanna kinda keep with this trip is if there's no fish, or if there's fish there that's not biting, time to move. Pack up shop, go find some fresh water, find some areas with different cover, grass. We've got five, or actually we got, we got four days to figure this place out. And every second counts on this body of water and this mission. Oh boy, come on, come on baby. Please be a big one too. I'm rushing over and don't want anything to do with the f bait. Put the lead on there. There we go, about time. Made a little adjustment there. Guess that was enough to get bit. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Holy hell. That's kind of the size we're after, baby. <laughs> no way, man. Just a little tiny adjustment. That's a good fish. About damn time, son. About damn time. Look at this. It's a 7 4 rod with a 4,000 size spinning reel. We're fishing for bass. This is, this is a nice one. I don't know how big it is. Probably close to four. Look at her scream that drag. 
Woo let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Come on up, sissy. Do one more jump for us. You want to do one more jump for us? Oh my gosh, this, this thing is heavy. You about to jump. Oh, <laughs> this thing is heavy. These river smallmouth, they are a different breed. Look at the size of that thing. Ooh, look at that meat. This has got some meat, son. Oh my gosh. That might be bigger than four. <laughs> look at the size of that fish. That's why we came here, baby. That is what, oh look, fish was never hooked. It was just straight tension. I just literally pulled that out of its mouth. That is a behemoth. This is what St. Lawrence River is all about. Oh, can she even fit, Caleb? Oh man, she's so wide, dude. You're gonna have to get her that 12 millimeter. You're gonna get a nice weight on this small jaw. See how big she is. I'm gonna guess she's probably five pounds. An absolute river beast. That right there is a five pound smallmouth bass. <laughs> Third fish of the trip and it's a five pounder. Not too many places you can just pull up to without hardly any experience and catch a five pound small. Very quality fish. Wow, that is such a beaut. Not a very long fish, but just like all girth, all fat. I'm gonna take some pictures and send her back. <sighs> Feels good to be here, baby. <laughs> one last peek at this true beauty. It's incredible, dude. Did you think, did you think day one, We've already caught a five pound smallmouth and this is not even the biggest fish in the river. Woo, that feels so good. That feels so freaking good. I'm not even gonna joke with you guys. I've been on the struggle. One thing I'm always trying to convey to all y'all watching is that I'm not some sort of hero. I'm not a pro by any means. I struggle just as much as anyone does. And today's a perfect example of that. It's 1229, I should be munching on a sandwich right now sitting on a picnic bench, slurping on a white claw, but I'm out here still struggling to figure out what these smallmouth want. I bounced around to many different islands, cuts, points, channels today. We almost went out to Literal Lake, Ontario, but seeing as the wind is cranky, we figured we'd uh, scratch that plan just so we don't sink the boat. We have fished so much today. We fished points, we fished underwater hums, islands, I mean, grass, rock, sand, deep, shallow, and I haven't been able to show much for it. You know, this is gonna be kind of a difficult series because I'm learning a new fishery. I'm trying to figure it out myself. Uh, I have reached out to one person, Chris Aldane. Chris, if you're watching this video, thank you for giving me some spots. We haven't fished any spots today because most of them are very far out in the middle of the lake and the wind's cranking. So we're trying to avoid that. So with that in mind, I've been not doing so good. That was my third fish ever. Uh, one thing I did change up though, is instead of throwing the drag and drop worm on the drop shot, I switched to one of my tried and true favorites, and that is a rattling Ned on the drop shot, which seems kind of weird. Might seem kind of ass backwards, almost like throwing a stick bait on a jig as a trailer. Like that wouldn't make sense, would it? But that's kind of the point. It's something a little bit different. These fish are probably very used to seeing four to five inch worms on a drop shot. And one thing I like doing back home in Maine is taking a rattling Ned, preferably in the smelt color, which is more of a bait fish color, biting the little rattle out of it, I bite the rattle out, so that way I've got a hollow tail. And with that hollow tail, I get a bit of buoyancy on the booty end. So it kind of twerks in front of the fish's face. It's a very small presentation. It looks very similar to a bait fish. I just worked that point with, I don't know, maybe five different casts with the worm as soon as I switched to this. I mean, literally as soon as I switched to this, we probably have it on camera, I got bit by that five pounder. So a little tiny tweak, a small adjustment can mean everything to cracking the code, to breaking the ice, the smally ice. And I think, you know, I'm gonna keep with that. It may not be the 100% total answer, but I can see it working. I've also got current coming through here too. It's a super deep island. I'm sitting in 32, casting into like 20 foot. I can see the current coming this way, the wind coming this way. Just pay attention to different things. If you're not catching fish in a specific spot, go somewhere completely new. Don't just try to replicate something that isn't working. And I, and I feel like a little bit today I was doing that. I was fishing the same over and over again and pulled over to this super deep point and five pounder, five pound smallmouth. That's huge. That is huge. All right, enough blabbering. Let's keep eating, baby. All right, going back in. Super long casts in deep water generally give you a good chance of getting a, a nice bite. Having a bit of distance between you and the bass is good. Making sure they don't see you. I just got bit again. There we go. Yeah, I think we figured them out. 
They want that little nad, baby. I don't think it's a very big one, but... Ooh, starting to feel a little heavy. Starting to feel a little heavy, maybe. Oh, boy. I cannot believe just a slight little adjustment like that. Going from the drag and drop to the rattle and nut is all it took. Come on, baby. Three, four pounder, maybe? I don't know. I can't get a good look. Yeah. Also, like three pounder, four pounder. <laughs> look at those jumps, dude. Look at those jumps. Oh, my God. That's some meat. That's some meat. Oh, my God. God, dude. This fish looks so much different than the last one. It's got those tiger stripes, a little bit more brown than black. There's no place on earth that you can catch smallmouth that look like this. I mean, that's not even exaggeration. There is something special about this river in Lake Ontario and the quality smallmouth. Heck of a fight. There we go. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a nice one. God, it's it's in, these fish just don't move. It's so stupid. They just literally sit down there. Like seldom can I even gain any sort of leeway on these big old. Oh my gosh, dude! Oh, that's why. Because <laughs> it's not a bass. <laughs> I'm like, dude, this thing is not fighting like a bass at all. That makes perfect sense. Oh boy, I would catch a, I, you know what? That would happen to me. I would catch a little tiny gator on a drop shot. I don't know how long, I don't know. How has this even lasted this long? How have you not cut me off? You're gonna be a little too big to flip in the boat. That's all I can say. <laughs> it's got some small mouth jeans. That was nuts. I've never seen a pike do that before. Yeah. <laughs> Second pike of the day. Oh, there might be a, an afternoon or morning where we just strictly target these guys, especially seeing as we're, we've caught now two on accident just while bass fishing. I can't imagine what the results would yield if we, uh, you know, strictly chase after them. Catch you later, slimy. Dang, dude, what are you doing out there eating drop shots for? You're supposed to eat spinner baits and jerk baits, not freaking Ned rigs on a drop shot. That time. About time. Just a little guy. Just a wee little St. Clair smallmouth. Oh, it's been like two hours since I got a freaking bite and I finally finally got one to eat. It's not like I'm not seeing them. And it's definitely not for lack of effort. It's just, it seems like right now some fish don't want to eat, some fish do. And no matter if I'm scoping at them or just blind casting, it's like, I don't. I don't, I don't, I'm not really confident in what I'm doing. Like, yeah, we caught some good fish today, but the numbers have not been bountiful. Get over here, little guy. Ugh. Just a guppy. Just a guppy swimming in the midst of a river teeming with giants. It has been a very strange day. I'm gonna get this guy right back in the water. It's been a very strange day. I don't know if it's that kind of summer to fall transition up here in New York that's got these fish acting weird, but I'm still struggling, like it's 3 p.m. In a couple hours, we're gonna have to head back to our island and get hunkered down for the night and figure out tomorrow's game plan. So, I mean, yeah, like numbers wise, pretty dusty. Honestly, quality wise, also pretty dusty. Knowing what I know about this lake, I'm not super stoked about my performance. Uh, I am trying to keep like a half class full mentality though and be like, we've had a good day. Like there's nothing to complain about, but the whole purpose of this trip is like figure out something new every day. And I don't really feel like I figured out much today if i'm being honest i figured out how to get lucky and catch a few fish um regardless got a buddy coming in right around 12 a.m old connor he always seems to join us when we uh spend some time on the island so he's gonna he's gonna come through and try to catch some fish for us too what are you taking a picture of my wide open zipper also too i just want to point out that yes i know my zipper is open my wiener is concealed but my zipper is open uh these bibs broke on me so these are the only bibs i have actually these bibs had mold on them so these these bibs are not doing very good and they're also not lucky too it'd be okay if they had mold on them and they were lucky bibs but they're like unlucky moldy broken bibs so um, 10,000 islands is kind of kicking our ass getting back just in time decided to rain out of nowhere <laughs> mother nature heard mother nature was like oh I heard you guys had a slow day in the water how about some rain to make it better does that sound good we've made it 
back to the love shack. Not a whole lot of love today. Maybe uh, we should rename it the, um, I don't know, get snubbed by smallmouth shack. I think that's a more fitting name. No, I can't complain, got a five pounder, but we're here, we've made it. It's time to settle down, go cook some brats, get rigged and ready for tomorrow's mission. Look how low the water is too, by the way. I'm not sure if you guys noticed this, but the water's so low that the water's supposed to be up by the dock. But there's only like maybe a foot from where our boat is being parked next to the dock. So, I mean, another couple more dry months up here and you will not be able to get any sort of watercraft up here. Thankfully, the old Lunsky, she drafts good 6.9 inches. Oh, well, I need to trim up my moat. Okay, well, the skeg does not draft 6.9 inches. <laughs> What a sight to see after chasing smallmouth all day on one of the most epic fisheries in the world. If not the world, at least the United States. I can't believe we're making this happen. This is so sick. I wanted to turn the camera on to show you guys uh, where we're staying and what life is like on the river and maybe give you a perspective as to what this might be for you if you plan on renting an Airbnb on an island or maybe on mainland and experiencing St. Lawrence River for yourself. But of context, I got this place two weeks ago. Pretty easy to get a spot in the off season. Most folks, Florida folks and Southern folks are starting to go back down south as things cool down. So this wasn't too expensive. I think it was like $200, which really isn't that much. It sleeps like six people. The only thing you miss on a pad like this is no heating and no AC. But this time of year, the weather's so beautiful, it's great. So if it gets too hot, open up a window. If it gets too cold, put a you know, toboggan on, double up on socks, you know, maybe wear an extra pair of underwear. I don't know, but it's very nice and very comfortable. It comes with your own dock. Despite the fact that the water's low right now, we can still park our boat down there. Got an extension cord running from the house down to the Lund. So we're charging my three lithium batteries, which sets us up for success, hopefully tomorrow. But I want to give you guys a quick little look as to what it's like. I think, I think this Airbnb is for couples but <laughs> it works for anglers too. Okay, got the rods over here. We're gonna do a bit of rigging tonight. I'm gonna try some different things. You know, I'm not really sure what I was doing wrong today, but there was something that I was missing, whether it be fishing the wrong spot, fishing the wrong color, maybe the wrong cadence with the lure, I don't know, but we'll figure it out tomorrow. So one of the reasons why I brought my rods up here so I can twiddle with them inside in the light. Let's take a step inside the love shack. Here's the kitchen. We are working on brats right now. I got uh, water boiling for that. Here we go. Here's where I'm staying. Just a simple bag. All I have is my bag, computer. Very nice bed. Probably could sleep too. I also brought a heater too in case it gets really cold. I don't think it will. Caleb just got done thinking of poop. How was your poop? It was fantastic. <laughs> but, yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> That's where Caleb's sleeping up there. He has a peep. There's like a little loft up there. And then there's another one right there. And they connect. And they connect, so if, cool. if you want to cuddle up with your buddy in the middle of the night, feeling a little lonely, feeling a little scared. It is a love shack. It is a love shack. Love shows no boundaries. There we go, here's like a little living room space, no TV, which is great. Your TV and your best view is out there. A little desk, so you can do your homework. In our case, edit a video, couch. The dumpers in there, we're gonna steer clear of that because Caleb just got done using it. Um, <laughs> what else do we have here? That's about it, it's, it's pretty cool. It's like basically just three rooms and it works for what we need. I know not all of you guys are interested in the Airbnb side of things, but I've always been intrigued showing you guys how we make it happen. You know, Airbnbs are cool. It's weird, you're literally renting someone's house for a day or a week. Also over here, we won't be staying in this, but this property also comes with a freaking yurt. Well, this is pretty cool. Wow, why well, does this have all like the... Fishing, man. Whoa, who drew those, a 12 year old? <laughs> My Cropatris Dolemiu, smallmouth bass, if a smallmouth bass looked like that. <laughs> That's pretty cool though. This looks like something that you would build in like the sa safari. Mm -hmm. This is pretty cool. It is cool. It's actually hotter in here than oh, it is. Oh, deer tracks? Oh no, what's that? Oh no, uh, someone's doing a, a bit of striper fishing. Yeah, a little tuna popping. No, tuna pooping maybe. Mm. So yeah, I mean for 200 bucks you get that and then you also get this yurt too. But the yurt's kind of dope. Yurt so sounds like something that you say when you get hit in the gut. Yurt! Oh! 
Anyway, there you have it. I'm gonna get to I'm gonna get to brat duty. I know Caleb's hungry. I'm hungry. We need brats in order to survive. It's the main staple food when you're out in the wilderness doing a bit of camping and Airbnb and camping and Airbnb. Those are two different things. I don't know why I said both those simultaneously. Anyway, it's brat time. Oh my god. <laughs> Brats were on fire. I was on the phone with, with Kaylee. She's oh look at that. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Oh hey! Jesus Christ, welcome to Benny Hanna's. Hey. Now that I'm a dad, I gotta check the tongs, make sure they're in working order. I gotta service these. These are not mine. These are the Airbnb owners. Yeah. 6.5 out of 10. Should have brought my own. Anyway, as my good friend Sam Dice used to say, we're cooking brats tonight. Yeah, got how many? One, two, three, oh, five brats, two. We can share, well, you want to share one and then give Connor the rest? Mm. Or we have two each and then we let Connor have one. Mm. He's skinny, bro. Mm. He does, his metabolism is... He's that college quarterback. He's college, yeah, he, he, he was a college quarterback, so he's just, well, maybe that means he needs more. He's a growing boy. I don't know, we'll have to fight over the last brat, but regardless, this is it. This is life on the river, living on an island, food, fishing, friendship. <laughs> the island three boys. Fs, the three Fs <laughs> of fishing St. Lawrence. What would you, what'd you say? The island boys. <laughs> the island boys. What, what would the fourth F be? Let us know in the comments. Let us know, yeah, let us know in the comments what the, the the fourth F would be. Food, fishing, friendship, and what's the fourth F? Because I thought, you know, anyway, I'm moving over these brats, trying not to burn down this whole Airbnb and lose my deposit. Things are good, though. Things are good. Connor should come in approximately four hours. He should be crossing through Vermont right now on his way to upstate New York to come meet us and chill and do a bit of dangling with the boys. It's always a good time when you have good friends that are willing to come down and spend time with you on uh, on a fishing mission. That camera's so close to me, dude. I feel like my <laughs> nose looks like a, I'm like, uh, uh, like, a, like a clown. Dude, I don't think we can do this. I don't think it's better the other way, is it? No. We're not even out there yet. This is really f 